Welcome to The Trader, a traitor's podcast. My name's Matthew and I'm a writer working in TV development and I am a handy faithful. That phrase is more important in this episode than any other. The Trader features deep dives into every episode of the multi-award winning hit TV competition series, The Traitors, as well as interviews with contestants from the shows. And this is season three of the podcast dedicated to The Traitors Australia. It's time for another interview special, and I am so excited for you to hear this one. I spoke to the one and only Teresa Newton, aka Saint Teresa, all about her love of Roger, twins, and her in-game stalker Matt. Let's go ahead and listen to our most recent Banished Faithful. I am so excited to speak to the super special Trader guest. I am joined by fan favourite Faithful, who made it all the way to the penultimate episode of The Traitors Australia before being banished. Teresa Newton, aka Saint Teresa. Oh, Teresa, how are you doing? Kia ora, everyone. Kia ora. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing... so happy to be here, Matthew. I've been watching your podcast since I'm so into it. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, I, I have to explain the St. Teresa thing. There, a super fan of the Traitors, Rob, who has uh, been on two episodes to co-host with me, he adores you and he anointed you St. Teresa because you are I'll his favourite. I'll take it. So... I'll take it. Well, yeah, it's better than Mother Teresa because when people call me that, I'm just saying, oh man, listen, I'm old, but I'm not that old. Like, relax. <laughs> no, no, just saying here. Uh, so shout out to Rob. Uh, because he's very excited I'm talking to you. Um, awesome. Hi, Rob. <laughs> I have another question for you already. Um, I want to learn how to use the phrase handy in a sentence because you used it oh, on an handy. episode of The Traitors and it made me laugh yeah. so much. It's It means 100, <laughs> as in like, oh my gosh, like, like oh, he's so mean. You're like, handy. Like okay. 100%. It's a handy. <laughs> a handy. Right. And my one of my missions this episode is to use that in a sentence with you. So Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> handy. Handy. <laughs> now, before we go any further, and I have lots of questions to ask you, I'm going to introduce you to our game, which is called The Trader Traitor. Our secret mission for the rest of the episode is to try to betray one another by telling an undetected lie. You can tell me something about the show, about yourself, or anything else that is a complete fabrication, big or small. For example, you could tell me that Roger passed you his number on the way out of the banishment room. However, your lie can't be a fake opinion. Like saying you think Roger feels more like a Scorpio than a Pisces, um, right. but he has a Pisces. Uh, so we're oh, looking for. Oh, do you know that Pisces and Virgos? <gasps> I wonder. It's meant to be. He's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, it's meant to be. I'll call them. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> so we're we're looking for fake facts. Does this make sense? Absolutely. Thanks. Okay, so I'm ready. Our game begins now. So, uh. Teresa, I have some specific episodes, uh, questions about episodes throughout the series. Um, I wanted to ask, first of all, you were one of the people who really early on suggested that Claire might not work in a supermarket, even though she did. Why, why, did, every, why did everyone think that and why was everyone really into that? I reckon it was the accent. It was very sophisticated. I do love a Welsh sort of, you know, accent and... Um, she, I don't know, she carried herself like, you know, I was just like, that is a, that's a nice jacket. <laughs> like, you're working in a supermarket. I don't know, man. Like, that's a, a $70 jacket, dude. Like, I'm shopping at Kmart over here. Like, she's a magistrate. She's definitely a magistrate. Yeah. God, we felt dumb after that. We were laughing. <laughs> <laughs> um, something else quite early on in episode two, one of my favourite moments you said that you didn't want to disappoint daddy, referring to Roger I laughed for a good five minutes um, two questions how handsome was Roger and when will he come on my podcast 
Um, listen, I actually have his number. So, um, so <laughs> I'll flick him a text. But, um, I, you know, I saw that and I was mortified myself. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at one of my friends. I didn't even realize I'd said it. Honestly, I um I don't remember saying it. Um, but he is delightful. <laughs> and everything about him is just amazing. He's such a nice guy, though. Happily married, unfortunately. But <laughs> um, you know, he's um he's a really, really nice guy. He was very cool, very cool, and definitely moisturized. Yes, looks like it. Well, that's nice to hear. And that that was, uh, even though you don't remember saying it, that was the moment I thought, I I need to pay attention to everything Teresa says from now on, because <laughs> she will be the comedy value of this series. Oh, um, no. Now, I, I want to ask a couple of questions about Chloe. Um, you, you told Chloe quite early on that she shouldn't rely on her gift in the game. You said it was freaking some people out. And you asked, you know, what, what's going to happen if your predictions are wrong. So you gave me the impression that you were a believer, but that you just didn't think Chloe should be using her gift. Were, were you a believer or were you just being sort of diplomatic with her? I, I'm, a, I'm a believer. I believe in that in that sort of stuff. You know, like um, uh, we grow, grow up in like a cultural, spiritual you know, I come from a tiny island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Um, and, you know, my grandmother was like the witch doctor. And it was, you know, um, you know, so we grew up around that. But I think I was trying to look out for her because you can come across as quite crazy. And, you know, if all about, if the only thing about you is clairvoyancy, then like what else is there about you? You know, I wanted to know if she had family and who, did she have brothers or sisters and, you know, where does she live? And, you know, like I wanted to know personal things, but she was just like, the spirits, did you want to talk to Elvis? I'm like, bitch, no, I want to talk to you. What are you doing? <laughs> Turn it down, crazy. <laughs> and Chloe then voted for you and announced that she wanted to leave in the same breath. Yeah. Can you like talk us, talk us through that? How was that experience? I'm not sure how much I can tell you, but we actually had a little bit of a run in before that. Like, oh. yeah, we had a little bit of a um, a run in just before she left, which they didn't show, but I don't think it was actually on camera. So it was just, listen, I was like, it happened because all of the uh, contestants were like freezing in, in the graveyard challenge. They were all cold ass because yeah. they're all skinny bitches. So I said that. I was like, <laughs> I feel great. I'm like, yeah, like, how's it feeling? Like, fuck you, skinny bitches. <laughs> um, and just before that, she was just like, I took real offense to you calling me a skinny bitch. And I was like, what now? And it came out of nowhere. And I was like, but I was joking. Like, I'm like, oh my God, like relax. And everybody around the table was just like, what? Um, and then she was just like, oh, it just brought back PTSD. And I was like, oh my God, seriously? And I, I was like, listen, I'm so sorry. I was just fucking around, dude. And, um, <laughs> and then she came in that room and then like, I knew she was going to vote for me, man. I knew it because like, she's, yeah. And just before that, I kind of just said to her, you know, like chill out. Yeah. Like, chill out, crazy. It's just, you know, I felt like it was fine if the boys were like, we don't believe you. But I was telling her and she was just like, oh, and she got really, uh, like, offended by that. And I'm like, but, like, like, those two boys just told you exactly the same thing and you laughed at them and blinked, you know, battered your eyelids. I was yeah. like, dude. So I, um, I don't know, I like, she was a nice lady, but crazy. <laughs> Someone who I, I bet would have laughed at that would be Fee. Um, you, Fee, uh, and Ethan, Miguel. you you seem to bond very quickly. What what connected you three together? Um, the waiting. They should have called that show the waiters. Like when you're filming, <laughs> it's man. And then like, because I'm pretty sure we all had ADHD. So we were like, you know, we bonded over just dumb shit, not allowed to talk. But like, you know, pulling stupid eyes or like just making each other laugh. And I was like, oh, these are my kind of people. Like, they were very cool, man. I got on with Ethan Fee. They were, we were in the same bus from the hotel to the game. Ah, uh, okay. And um, yeah, they were very cool. Yeah. Uh, I have 
quite a few questions from listeners of the podcast. So I'll start with a few of those just now and, and dot them throughout. Um, actually, Lindsay, Lindsay is my best friend and Lindsay has hosted several episodes of the podcast with me. She has not a question, but a compliment. She says you are her favourite player and she wanted you to win. Uh, oh, I wanted to win too. I got <laughs> bills, mate. <laughs> like, shit, I come so close. <laughs> yeah, and likewise, um, Rob, who I mentioned at the start, Rob's quite. Rob has some questions for you, which I'll ask you um, in a little bit. But his question for all the other players that I've spoken to was, "Who was your favourite fellow contestant, and why was it Teresa?" So Rob is. <laughs> going hardcore for you um i i love it <laughs> i have a couple of questions from joseph um joseph asks would you have wanted to be chosen as a traitor no absolutely not um like well you can see me on the show it's everything is just like written all over my face i am as honest as they get and it gets me <laughs> into a lot of trouble but, you know, I'm willing to deal with that. And I'm being a trader. My big fat mouth was <laughs> like, just, I would like sink myself. I would sink myself because I tend to just talk. And then like, oh, shit, I should have said that. Like, <laughs> And then I would have talked too much to sort of cover up the lie. So no, not at all, man. I would have been like, nah, I'm leaving the game. Yeah. And... <laughs> Joseph also asks, traitor related, he says, did you ever suspect Alex, either from the beginning or after she'd been recruited? And he says, P.S., you're my favourite player. Oh, thank you. Um, no, I did it not till the very end when there was people going and I just thought to myself, man, we haven't voted for her. And I was like, no, she's so sweet. And she was like, perfect. And everyone gave her shit about it, man, but she just... She was perfect. She played it so well. I was like, I was like, Jesus, like you're an idiot. <laughs> Watching it back, I was like, what the fuck? I did not see that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have a couple of questions from Alan. Uh, Alan is number, Alan uh, has been on the podcast as well um, and he loves the show. His number one question was, will you be his BFF? And his second yes. question. Yes. Um, yes, Alan, I will. <laughs> His second question, which I will follow up on, is do you think Matt still thinks you're a traitor? <laughs> man, I'd be surprised if Matt knew where his undies were at the moment. Like, he <laughs> is, man, that guy. Oh, do you know, he sent me a message. Matt sent me a message when we came out of the game, and it was so sweet. It really was. It was him just saying, you know, like, oh, I'm so sorry. And we were just playing a game. And I was like, Matt, you don't need to say sorry, dude. Like, you know, trust your convictions. I'm like, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and you look terrible on TV. <laughs> but um, he was just, you know, he's all right. I love yeah. you with that. Yeah. <laughs> so he's terrible at the game. <laughs> To paraphrase Mariah Carey and Regina George from Mean Girls, why was he so obsessed with you? And <laughs> Rob, again, Rob, this is Rob's actual questions. Um, he says, how did you not just lose your mind with Matt? He says, your sainthood was earned keeping your cool with his relentless accusations. So so why was Matt obsessed with you and how did you keep your cool? Do you know, I've thought about this quite often. I think it's because when you've got somebody that's big and bright, I think he's probably used to being, you know, the big, bright, bubbly person in his circles. And then when you've got somebody else that's big, bright, you know, like same sort of personality, but of different, you know, dynamics. I don't want to say like not, not jealousy, but I just think that maybe he thought he had to fight for the limelight. But if you've got to fight that much, like you obviously can't be that interesting. <laughs> So I I think that I just probably took up a lot of his space. <laughs> I'm a big yeah. bitch. God damn it, these pods keep falling out. It's because I've got tiny ears. <laughs> um, that makes sense about Matt. Because I, I sort of wondered that as well. Like he's an estate agent. He's used to like getting people to close deals. So I kind of wondered. Yeah. yeah. Was he just I, sort of had picked up on something, one thing and was determined to see it through no matter yeah, what? Yeah, I just don't think he liked me in the house. I don't think he liked me, like, in his space. Um, but I can't help that, like, you know, I was like a 
I'm like this all the time. It's exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have another specific question about an episode. This is a little bit more recent. In episode 10, you vote for Paul when everyone else voted for Nigel. And that seemed quite unexpected when I was watching it. Oh. Um, why, why did you suspect Paul? And do you think this led to your downfall? <sighs> I I do you know I I picked Paul because I thought how the hell has this guy made it this far <laughs> like he gave nothing everything you saw on TV that's as much as he gave he gave nothing I only realised he was English like in the sixth episode and I'm there in the game with the bro <laughs> like I was oh you're English I was like oh my god there's no way this guy is staying in you know without being a traitor so I thought he was a traitor. I'm not saying that we like we didn't get along, but I just thought that space could have gone to somebody far more interesting. Um, and I never suspected Nigel. Oh, I love Nigel. I reckon the only reason I stayed in the game so long is because of my boy Nigel. We got on so well from the beginning, right from day dot me and Nigel. Um, and I think he's the only reason I stayed in so long. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we have to talk about episode 11 which is the episode where you are finally banished firstly did you see it coming going into the banishment room did you know what was ahead yeah yeah i really really did i it was me against lewis because i listen they didn't tell us that they put another traitor in if they had said to us there's another traitor i would have picked that from kate straight away absolutely she completely changed but i thought there's no way they haven't told us they told us the first time that they'd put a traitor in. There's no way they would hide it from us now. Yeah. So I just completely wiped that from my brain. I was like, there's no way they wouldn't do that to us, but they did. And I mean, it's in the rules. They can do whatever they want. Um, But I was, yeah, I just, um, I knew it was coming. Like I just, I felt it. And I was kind of exhausted, you know, like constantly fighting for it. And Craig was really chummy with Alex and Lewis great guy he's such a cool eric in that bro that dude he's um really good but i thought nah traitor <laughs> <laughs> how have you coasted through the game this long without <laughs> like a a single vote that's what i was going on no single vote so yeah. i'm just like oh and i look back now and i'm like you idiot <laughs> like you know i could have been eating steak <laughs> and it's it's funny you brought up kate because that's i was going to ask about that that to me, I, I I got the impression that you guys had kind of bonded when you teamed up on Marielle. So for, for then Kate to turn on you would yeah. would have made me think that was very suspicious. So, you know, at the it time, did so you think suspicious. that was odd? Yeah, absolutely. And that's when I just went, oh, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Something's going on. Um. And, you know, because you couldn't say much. And we had bonded. Like, we knew that each other was faithful when she yeah. turned it again i was just like but i just proved to you that i'm faithful and so yeah again um i think that if we were told that there was another traitor added then that that game would have ended differently much differently yeah, yeah. or maybe if you hadn't been banished right then it might have changed things moving forward i know that. and do you know what i scream at myself so like because you know when i watched it back i was like why didn't you just talk to lewis and and, and there was a moment there where i spoke to lewis just beforehand they didn't show it and we were like okay so we're going we're getting for each other like why didn't i use that opportunity to just go are, are you a traitor because he said something early on in the game and i just i just dismissed it and i was just like that proved that he was faithful yeah so I was like, oh, Chaser, you did it, isn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and I got to talk Craig into anything. That guy, he was my boy. <laughs> yeah, but nah, just you. Yeah, it's like, what a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> now, on a, a little side note for a moment, I just mentioned uh, Marielle, and I interviewed Marielle recently. Marielle had told me that he did say that she suspected you could be a traitor. And that thing that led to Marielle's downfall was actually kind of true. Has Marielle or Fee told you this? Fee has told me. She's like, absolutely not, Teresa. That's not what I said. So I was <sighs> like, ah, like, 
Thank you. We got a we got a trainer. Um, but yeah, because Fee and I caught up afterwards after the game. You know, and if you caught up for a few drinks in um in Sydney, and I said to her, "Did you?" And she was like, "Teresa, no way." And I was like, eh. "You know," because she could have, she could have as well. But I just think that Fee would have said it if if Fee she would come straight to your face and she would tell you, mm-hmm. friend or not, that you can't. That girl, she won't hold a tongue. That's why I loved her. Yeah. You know, because, yeah, she's not talking shit at all. Yeah. So some, something suspicious is going on here then somewhere. Yeah. Something's yeah. not uh, right. And I don't care. I'm just, you know, we got Marielle out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so back to your banishment. You mentioned Craig as well a second ago. I, I felt like when I watched that episode, you you looked particularly shocked when Craig voted for you. Um, and from a from a viewer's perspective, it felt like Craig consistently played quite a poor game in terms of his votes. How did it feel when he wrote your name down? Um, he was definitely going out with, with numbers. And it was so strange because we had such a strong bond from the beginning, from the cocktail party, episode one. We had a really strong bond. And right through, we were steadfast. I knew that Craig was a faithful. And I said to him, let's get to the end. Let's get there. I'm faithful. You know, we'll get to the end. We'll watch each other's back. We were allies and we'll split that money at the end. You know, you're going to take some money home for your kid, which is what he, you know, that's what he wanted to do. Um, And then when he voted for me, I was just like, you fucking snake. (laughs) (laughs) You greedy fuck. Now you got home with nothing. (laughs) Can I swear on this podcast? Yeah, of course. (laughs) Go ahead. Um, (laughs) Please tell me what happened when you walked out the door and Roger joined you. Like, what a good sport of him to do that. What, what happened right? on the other side of the door? I thought that was so amazing with us because I was like, dude, I was going to cry. I was just like, oh, you're making up. And I was just like, are you coming? Do you want to go? And he was like, yeah, yeah, sure. And I was just like, I walked outside that door and then our PA lady is there. She's amazing. Uh, Kirsty's her name. Um, and she just had, she's like one of those mama bears. So she just had her arms out for me. She gave me a big hug. And then Roger's right behind me. And he like swings me around um, and gives me this big ass hug. And he was like, it was so much fun having you on the show. And I was just like, fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't even help me cheat. That's cool. Whatever, Roger. <laughs> Ladies. And then the producers were like, we have to like we have to roll that again. <laughs> like we cannot use that. And I was just like, are you kidding me? That was gold. And Roger's going, no, no, we're keeping that. And um, and they were like, can we go in? So they had to film it again, like me walking out. So oh. <laughs> but then they kept it. I couldn't believe they kept it. I was so stoked. Good. It's it made me laugh so much. I loved that moment. I uh, loved it too. <laughs> <laughs> I have just another few questions and another one from uh, a fan of the podcast and the show Jessica on Facebook asked did you ever feel guilty for pinning someone as a traitor and ripping into them during banishment only to find out they were a faithful did you feel bad about it not really <laughs> I'll be <laughs> honest like that ripped into me just as much I was trying to like be the good lawyer and um Turns out I'm really not a good lawyer. I would be terrible. I'd be like, yeah, I was no good. Um, it was more like I was trying to catch them in those lies and stuff. And then, like, you find out they're not lying. You're like, oh, bye-bye. <laughs> 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 like, when Olivia left. Oh, actually, I didn't even vote for Olivia. I didn't think she was um, uh, uh, a traitor at all, actually. But MK, he just had to go. That poor guy. And um, and so I didn't feel bad about that at all. Nah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um you uh when when did you find out then who the remaining traitors were and what was your reaction? When did you find out, oh, it's Kate and Alex? Um, I found out pretty much straight away, man, because as soon as you get out of the game, you're handed back all of your electronics and your social media and stuff. And so I was online and they must have seen me online on Instagram. But even when I came out, they had like a chat group going already. <laughs> and um, and somebody saw me online is like, ah, oh, Teresa, like, oh my God. And who was it that told me it was Mark? Mark's going, Alex the fucking snake. And I was like, what? How do you know? Because like I 
I was like the last one of the last episodes. I was like the eleventh episode, and I did not know. And yeah, it was just a bit full on, really. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, oh, so um, and then when we we're going back, shit, I don't even know how much of this I can tell. I don't give a shit. Um, <laughs> so when we were like, we had to come back for some extra filming for Channel Ten. Mm-hmm. And then, oh my God, it was pissing down with rain. And I pull up and there's Craig outside and it's episode 12. And I knew that they'd filmed it that day. And he's outside with the producer. And the producer's going, oh my God, oh my God. Because I walk up, I'd been dropped off by somebody to come do some extra filming. And I was like, oh. and I realized, and I went up and he was like, Teresa. And he come up and he gave me this big hug. And I was like, oh, how did you go? And he goes, not good. Not, and he was like on the brink of tears. And then the producer sort of ushered me away. And I was like, who, like, what's going oh, on? No. Yeah, I was, my heart broke for him. Yeah. I was like, oh, you look like you're going to cry. Mm-hmm. I'm like, don't cry in that car, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Craig. <laughs> yeah, it was so bad. So we'll, we'll find out then in the next episode what actually does happen and who ends up winning and how. Shit, um, okay, <laughs> you'll just cut that little bit out, won't you? Like, possibly. <laughs> give it away. <laughs> yeah, just do mine last. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Um, now we we have been playing our own game of betrayal, Teresa, and we're not totally finished with it. We're we're almost ready to conduct our own mini banishment. But before we do, where can we find out? more about you beyond the world of the traitors what should we check out where can we find you oh. so you'll catch me on instagram to reason Newton underscore wa um and also my company which is big mouth productions i um i'm a professional mc and a dj so and when i say dj not in the club because i'm too old <laughs> and i drink too much um so like I do weddings and stuff and big events and like big corporate uh, uh, companies like, you know, like Dulux, Heineken and all that. They employ me to come and jump on a stage and MC and entertain crowds. I've done it for like 11 years now and I love it. So yeah, Big Mouth Productions. Absolutely. I don't have an OnlyFans yet. <laughs> What's this space? <laughs> do you like feet? <laughs> Unpedicured size 11 feet. <laughs> There's a market for that, definitely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm hoping so. <laughs> uh, in fact, you were you've just been at um, a sort of every woman expo. Yeah, so every year I I, um, I host a lot of the expos and stuff in West Australia. Uh, the Every Woman Expo was like three days. I do the Dulux Trade Expo, Home Show, all of that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so and I love it, and it just goes for days, and it's just me talking shit to a crowd. And, and I love it <laughs> because I'm so thorough and I like to do my research. I was having a look at what was on at the Every Woman Expo, and there was a um, let me just check a mediumship, psychic, and energy demonstration. However, it was hosted by someone called Sunita and not Chloe, which I'm very disappointed in. <laughs> um, I actually I've got a twin sister. And um, and she hosts the smaller stage, right? And Sunita was actually um, over there. And you could, like, my sister's the MC. And you couldn't even, like, she's in the crowd going, whatever. <laughs> like, Michelle, like, what are you doing? Like, you have to go, oh, yes. Oh, I hear the voices too. And I was just going, oh, my God, what a load of shit. I was like, oh, my God, you're so unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> also, I should have said we... People can find you via the the podcast Instagram because I follow all of the Traitors contestants, so people will find you there as well. Um, we've been playing the Trade Our Traitor. We've been trying to tell a lie to one another. Ooh. Ah. I I have lied to Shit. you. <laughs> I forgot we were doing that. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Wait, this is how shit at the game I was. I would have won it had I had a game plan. I was just happy that I was getting like free food, free accommodation, time away from my kids. I mean, ah, okay, now, nah, I'm still in. Either that's your lie that you didn't lie to me, or you really did forget. Oh, no, I lied to you. <laughs> oh, you did lie to me? Of course I lied to you. I just wasn't trying to pick up your lie. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. You sound like a lovely madman. How did you lie? Um, 
Well, I'll I'll give you some thinking time. Well, I'm going to guess what your lie was. Do it. Right, I have a few options. I made some notes. I is your lie that you have Roger's phone number? <gasps> yes, yeah, Roger's phone number. <laughs> you should have played the game, Matthew. You. you win. You win. <laughs> 250 grand! Yay! <laughs> you went back all. <laughs> but could you get Roger's number? <laughs> I'll try no and way get... I've got it. <laughs> I'll try and track Roger down and get his number for you. Um, like, okay. If you can get it, I'm not going to get it. <laughs> we'll share it. <laughs> so wait, that means that, because one of my other options, do you really have a twin sister? I do. I've got an identical twin sister called Michelle. Oh my god, that... two minutes older than me. No, she, she's a um, creative producer for like the opposing channels. So she's um, yeah, she's and oh. so with my company and stuff, and I need an MC. Say they need more than one MC. MC I see Michelle. Like That's... no shit, she'll walk down the street and people will go, "Oh my god, are you Teresa from the show?" <laughs> like, no, I'm Michelle. Because <laughs> if I was, I would have won. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. amazing see i was that was going to be my second guess i was torn i was like, like maybe she lie. just made up that she had a twin no so. i've got like seven brothers and sisters dude it's like amazing yeah amazing i um, know so uh any idea what i lied to you about oh my god the only thing i can think about is your friend ellen or rob do you have a friend called ellen or rob <laughs> Alan and Rob are, are all real people and they are big fans. So none of that okay. was made up. All true. Yeah. This is how shit I am at this time. <laughs> Matthew, I didn't I wasn't there. <laughs> like okay. I'll reveal the truth. I actually almost failed as well. I I forgot to tell a lie right up until the end. So I I, I told one about 60 seconds ago. I was like, oh god, oh god, I didn't tell a lie. So I, my it was pretty pathetic. I lied and said that I was following all of the traitors contestants on Instagram. Oh my which god, is not Matthew! True. <laughs> Matthew, I was, that was what I was gonna say. See, you see why I lost the game? Because like the cameras stopped rolling, and I'm like, Ew. oh my god, hindsight, right? Exactly. Because we were having too much fun talking. Exactly. Uh -huh. WA. And I've been doing this with so many people that I've I've honed my skills of detecting lies. So I've I've got an advantage that I've been doing this constantly. So I was hoping I said it so earlier on that <laughs> um I was hoping I said it really early on so that like you'd be like da, 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 da. <laughs> I've learned really bad at the game. I've learned. Um Teresa, thank you so much. I bet the listeners are just gonna love this. Especially the people who sent in <laughs> questions. Um, I enjoyed our chat. Handy? Did that make uh, sense? Handy. Did that work? Yes, yes. <laughs> you say a uh, handy, handy as in a hundred percent. Okay. I enjoyed it, yeah. Handy. Yes. Oh, you're doing so well. I'm, um, <laughs> thank you so much for having me on. I've I've been listening to your podcasts and stuff, and I just like I'm so impressed that you loved it so much. Will you try and get on to the show? I did apply, however, I now work in a TV company, so I think my chances of then becoming on a TV oh. program are pretty limited, so I don't think that's in my future. Oh, what a load of shit. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, is that the lie? No. That's not, that's true. That's lie. not a lie. That's not a lie. <laughs> um, so I will be a happy viewer and podcaster, and I will get to not ruin the magic of it, so... Excellent. Let's hope there's an all stars that they yeah. invite me back and that, that they don't, you know, make me run. I mean, so several people have said, "Oh my God, Matthew, do you think there'll be an all stars?" So that would be amazing. Wouldn't I would love that. Be that. awesome. Yes. I'd love it too. Free <laughs> hotel. I'm in. Free you and Fee. Back. You and Fee need to go back for that. Oh, you know it. I just love that girl. She's a boost. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, thank you so much. I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye bye. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much. Bye, Matthew. Hello, faithful trader listeners. I had the best time talking to Teresa. She was so much fun, and I appreciate the questions and comments you sent in. I think Teresa did too. If you want even more info on the podcast and the traders, you can keep up to date with me on Instagram at the Trader Podcast or Twitter at the Trader Pod, 
or you can email me at thetradarpodcast at gmail.com. You could also do me a really big favour by subscribing or following or leaving a lovely review on whatever platform you're using to listen, particularly Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Until next time, which will be our finale episode, stay faithful. Thank you.